Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. It's episode 189. 190. 189. 190? 186. 186. I was going to say, I don't even know. The Compound Podcast presented by Parse Rum. My favorite rum, your favorite rum, Parse Rum. The rum that's great to drink around wintertime. Dakota's drinking some Parse Rum in his eggnog right now. Woo! He's texting because he doesn't care about the podcast, but he is, oh, God. I don't know how you can chug eggnog. Roast. It's just I could roast literally, you, you could, could put an IV into my veins and I could run off of stuff. I'd probably have diabetes because there's a lot of sugar, but I could run off it. You just put a little bit of parse in your eggnog or whatever mm-hmm. other uh, holiday drink you're drinking, and it'll be a great holiday. Parse rum. I just created a new ad for parse rum. So it's been a couple weeks since we got together. There's a lot that's happened. Okay. You're saying how you missed us. I did miss yep. you guys. I did miss you guys. And then I was met with Dakota saying that he didn't miss the podcast not, at all. And he didn't. Not true. Have nothing to if talk if about. you're going to try to call me out, don't make me say what I said I was going to say. I, now you're trying to turn it on me and I'll turn it right back around. Buddy. I did miss getting together. So we recorded on the sixth, sixth, maybe because we did, we did an episode for the week and then we recorded the Sean Casey episode. And then we took Thanksgiving week off. So really, it's been a few weeks since we've all gotten together. November 14th. That was November 14th. So it's, that's the first recording. Yeah, like two, yep. three weeks. Two weeks. Wild. Wild. Three weeks. Probably the longest time we've gone without recording. Yeah. Maybe since we started. Can we start with what I just saw you do and take your ring off? Because I saw it on your finger and then I saw you like take it off for a second. I was like, ah. There he is. I, yeah. The married man. I did get married. Yeah. It was Thank sick. you. Thank you. Um, Zach and Dakota were at the wedding. We had a great time. <sighs> I don't know if I've recovered yet. It was a nice party. It was... You guys have fun? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was, was I was so sad when it was over. Yeah, he was. Zach we're talking about. I was, was bummed, man. I'll never go to something that nice again in my life. I would like to pass on. A fact. bit of a bit of wedding advice that was passed on to me from Danny Mueller, which was to have the welcome festivities, welcome party on Thursday, and then give people a day of rest on Friday, mm-hmm. and then crank it back up for the wedding on Saturday. Because let me tell you, I needed the day of rest, yeah. and that was but, a great. That was a great inner like day in between. You rest up, you get yourself right, so that you can go into Saturday strong. But what'd you do Friday? You still got a workout, and the kid doesn't take days off. There's I no did. days I went, off. I went to Wrigley. I had a little spa day. Worked out. Sauna. Needed the sauna. Steam. It's great. <laughs> you did, the steam was huge. Scotty, Scotty Efros and I also went to a steam room later on Friday, and it was it was wonderful. That was the move. And then you guys got dinner with Scotty on Friday, right? Yep. Yeah, we went to Sunda. 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 Yeah. Sunday. That's just where, that's where I had my first date with my now wife. Wow. That's why we went there. We knew about that. that. We knew that story. Yep. Can I tell you, Ian? Zach's going to love this. Can I tell you the highlight of my weekend? Please. It has nothing to do with you. It was a great time. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Great time. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with you. Yep. So Friday night, we go back to the hotel and we're getting drinks at the bar at the hotel after dinner. And I walk up to the bar to get me and Zach some drinks. And the lady to my left says, I got a lady to my left, a couple to my right. Lady to my left says, you know, you kind of look like Travis Kelsey. And I said, ma'am, I appreciate it. But in no way do I look like Travis Kelsey. I said, thank you. I'm going to take that as a compliment, but I don't. Lady to my right goes who'd she say you look like i said travis kelsey and she said oh no you're much better looking than him i said who put you guys up to this yeah what's going on here i said this I, is real what a weekend for you two things oh, i would hang on I, hang on let me double down on this real quick zach and then you'll go back to it yep and i had ian first text he yep. sent me friday morning which says how good i looked yep and schwarber asked me how much weight i'd lost i said what's going on here guys yeah someone put you up to this you look great. I, I can second all of that was right there. Zach's and face when I turned and looked at it was like, I would like to, can we somehow tweet at the person who said you had a face for radio? Remember that? Yep. Yeah. Suck it. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, just guess that what? One. It's called receipts, and people don't forget. That was a good. And I receipt. had two women tell me I was better looking than Travis Kelsey. Not so, true, but I appreciate it. I think I like you doing what Travis did. What I'm hearing is I could tra- date Taylor Swift. Thank you. That's what I was gonna say. Make a bracelet for her. Get in there. I like that. Perfect. That's a hell of a weekend, huh? Uh, yeah, that's why I literally wrote in my notes for this pod. I go wedding highlights, and I put in parentheses Travis Kelsey story. Yep. It was uh, it was it was very fun. It was a great weekend, and then I went to Japan for two weeks. One more thing before your honeymoon. Yep. Did you get any money back from the wedding planner? Oh. There had to be some sort of refund. No. No. We, we had a little we had a little snafu. You, you tell the story. You tell the story. A little snafu. What had happened was mm-hmm. there was going to be in Chicago the weekend before Thanksgiving they do a lights parade where they light up Michigan Avenue uh and then they close thousands of people, thousands. And then they close Michigan Avenue for four-ish hours, maybe more. And uh that was right in the window of when the buses were coming back from the church to the uh reception venue. So our wedding planner had said that she had driven the route and that it was like, it's going to be no problem. We'll just take Lakeshore down, do the whole thing. That was not possible. Everything (laughs) was barricaded, blockaded. We had former Cubs, current Cubs getting off buses, talking to (laughs) police officers. You guys were driving over barricades in yours. Yeah. We had Riz got out of our bus and talked to a police officer, took us over a barricade. We had, Somebody was leading people across Michigan Avenue. We had one of uh, Julie's cousins ran down Michigan Avenue, grabbed with a wheelchair, an empty wheelchair to grab Julie's grandmother and wheelchaired her blocks in the city to get her to the hotel. It was was craziness. So we were a little late getting to the uh, happy hour, but it all turned out okay. That was our bus. We we look on our phones when we left the church and it says an hour 15. And it's like yeah. eight to 10 minutes to get to the hotel. And I'm like, this, this is not good guys. We're on the bus for like 30, 40 minutes. And eventually we like go up to the bus driver. We're like, you got to just get us as close as you can. And we'll walk it. And we got to like half a mile, a little over half a mile away. And you got girls in heels walking about half a mile. Not too happy. Bro, it was like a legit gridlock. Like there was no yeah. traffic moving, bro. Like there was nothing. And it's like, you just have to wait it out. I just kept laughing. I was like, yeah. this is kind of, this is a crazy story. So like, this I mean is awesome. When we when we were at the ceremony, I had to pee like <laughs> bro. You had to pee when we got to the church. You were right. And I was like, oh go all good. Bathroom. Like I was like, yeah, all good. Like I'll go. No worries. You've never been to a Catholic just, wedding before. Yeah, no, I I know. And I was like, all right, all good. I'll get in there. And like we sit down, I'm like, all right, I'll be good. And like throughout it, I was like, yo, I don't know how long I can last right now. And I ended up going after I got communion. And then if I didn't go then and had to sit on the bus, I don't know if, I don't know. I literally don't know what I would have done. I mean, there was, other, you could have went after the ceremony still. No, be, no, 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 no. Because we took the picture. We waited for Ian and Julie, remember? And then we had oh, to yeah, the bus. Yeah. As soon as you came back, we did have to leave. And then remember people were trying to go on the bus and the bus bathroom was locked. Oh mm-hmm. no. Yes. Like the guy was just like, yeah, like yeah. no bathroom. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, that was not the best part of the weekend. But uh, it was funny though. Like, it's, it's a funny, great right? story what, you have forever. That's what I was going to say. It's like, people were like, oh, they're probably so mad. And I'm like, honestly, like this is the part f- of it. Like it's funny. The fact it worked out. It was yeah, funny. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. it was like, nine o'clock and we still couldn't get there it would have been like this isn't really fun imagine anymore. if it was like 15 <laughs> minutes away and you were stuck and it's like what the, what the fuck do we do because well, i i kept saying to zach and scott after like 20 minutes i'm like dude like we have to walk you did like, and get I, you me were, off this yeah. bus like i'm done sitting on this bus i will walk if no one else will walk with me i'll be there drinking and honestly you saying that kind of like it got to like each person like you yeah. would hear more like i think we're gonna have to walk and then like you hear somebody like two rows up it's like I think we're gonna have to walk. It says it's like an hour and fifteen minutes away. Because we'd keep looking, and it was worse and worse. I'm yeah. like, we're not getting there, guys. I don't, I don't know what we're trying to do here, but we can't our get bus, there. Our bus. So we had the wedding party had a par- uh, party bus, and all the windows were blacked out, so you like really couldn't see outside. And eventually, we got like downtown, 
and it was i could see out of the darkened window just like a line of red traffic light like car lights and i was like oh god and i started to panic a little bit and was like this is not good because the, i don't know i don't know if the bus drivers took a bad route because they definitely didn't take lakeshore but like we couldn't see so i couldn't do anything to be like hey uh maybe take lakeshore and then the cub security was on our bus and he ended up talking to people and the like at one point, I think every police officer on Michigan Avenue knew that the wedding party was coming through at some point. We, they, they had to yeah, open the barricades did. for us, yeah. and we walked across in front of thousands of people. We're just walking across through the barricades. We're like, we have to get across. Yeah. What was funny is that you were like the one, like not upset, but the one like rattled by it. Julie was like, wasn't that crazy? Like she was yeah. just laughing. Julie was like, I was, was getting, I was getting upset on the bus, and I was like, oh, my God, everyone's going to have to walk. She's like, stop. There's nothing we can do about it. Exactly. I love that. Good That's for her. Awesome. I f yeah. Fuck yeah. It all, it all worked out. It was a great yeah. weekend. And then awesome. we went to Japan. Uh, we were in Japan for two weeks. We were in Tokyo. And we went up the Noto Peninsula for a couple of days. And then we went to Kyoto. And it was awesome. I just got back last night. Who'd you see? I did see Seiya. Um, I saw Seiya's translator toy. We had a nice dinner. And then Seiya came down for that dinner with his wife and very cute little kid and uh we were hanging out for i don't know 30 minutes 45 minutes and it was very nice of him to make the trip down and come say hi he gave us a, a nice wedding gift it's very nice of him and uh it was awesome to see him it was awesome to see him japan is an amazing country it is so clean and the people are so nice it's absurd how nice the people are yeah i we were at least i was living vicariously through your guys instagram stories and it looked crazy like it just you like you said it all looks so clean it was so clean and it was a beautiful time of year there like fall foliage we had great weather yeah. some amazing sushi some amazing the meat there it's just like oh. kobe beef and wagyu is like they're it's like they're normal it's their hamburger That's, it yeah. really is it yeah. really is like you go like you go to like i'm not like you're not paying a billion dollars for a steak it's just like the normal steak there is Kobe beef. It's what was uh like? What was your favorite? Did you have, did you try anything different? Oh yeah. Like, do you remember anything on top of your head? Sea that... urchin. You have Ted sea urchin. Uh, wow. Sea urchin. Good. Uh, nope. Uh, <laughs> the uh, sure there is one one dinner that was uh exclusively uh not exclusively, but they like used a crab and they made like a bunch of crab dishes, and they used the. Crab, the brain, the crab brain, as like a is like a like a stew. They call it miso, and it's like a crab brain like sauce. Is that what miso soup is? Crab brain? No, no. This I is like, wait a minute, different miso. Uh, that was aggressive. One one of the we were up the Noto Peninsula for a couple of days, which is like very traditional Japan countryside, and um, the breakfast like raw squid. <laughs> That's insane. Didn't like it very much. It, well, I didn't. Yeah, raw squid for breakfast wasn't going to go down. Wasn't going to start my day the right <laughs> that way. Didn't, that didn't do it yeah, for yeah, it. Didn't hit You're the like, spot. hey, can I just get like a muffin? Like, yeah. Can I just get like a blueberry muffin or something? Yeah, it's like like sardine, like on a sushi. Like sardine is a very common like normal fish there. I just there was some there's some stuff that my palate wasn't ready for, but uh, a lot of it was really amazing. Tried a bunch of new blowfish is good. I'll tell you, blowfish is very good. Uh, but you have to you, you have to have be like licensed to i was gonna say now. is that it's legal poisonous. <laughs> it's poisonous so you poisonous. have to yep but you have to cook it the right way you have to be licensed to cook it so you don't kill people but roe fish guys. very good uh a lot of a lot of really good fish and the meat man we went to this one place where this dude cooked steaks and he, it was like a he had like this old school like oven and he would put the steak into the oven and it was, it was like rotisserie it was like rotating and he presented the meat to you before he cooked it he like cut it and presented it. it was like a counter so there's like only eight seats and you sit there and he presents you the meat he says this is your piece of meat and then he weighs it in front of you because you order by the weight and then they do it in grams so it's like 150 grams and he puts it on the scale and shows it to you and it's like is this acceptable and you're like yes and then he cooks what, it what did you say no <laughs> well do you, you say no then he gives you more i guess i don't know and then like, you, oh you overcooked it put it i would never I, yeah i would never uh <laughs> say no and then he he cooks it in this oven and he's they use chopsticks to cook which is actually you, they're not stabbing stuff with forks you know they're using chopsticks which is a very 
Are they like wizards? Beautiful. Are they wizards yes, with chopsticks, wizards, dude? Wizards. They have it in their like they have like a like a the sheath. They have it in like their belt, <laughs> yeah. and they take it out, and they're like, <laughs> and and so he's you know it's very it's very elegant the way that they move stuff around with chopsticks, and so he's like putting the steak in and it's doing this rotisserie, and then he would like open the oven and he would just touch it, and he would just feel feel oh it's ready, just feel <laughs> the tenderness to like That's know wild. when it was ready the best piece of meat i've ever had it was unbelievable dakota you tried some new sushi right when we were at sunda <sighs> yeah zach kept making me which is funny because i i'm not a very like out there eater but i've tried to get into sushi a lot over the last year or so and i'm like dakota i promise like it's not like what it looks like no sometimes. there was a few things where and, and it was exactly what it looked like you lied to me I did not. So I, I've always said, and I said it that night at dinner. I said I'll try anything once, food wise. Like I'll try anything. Like you, I, I you don't almost know. didn't. You, you won't almost know till didn't. you don't know. I almost didn't, and then I, I had to give it rule. to you like an airplane. I was like, hey, here comes the airplane. <laughs> uh, no, but it was like, so I love like sushi rolls, and I love all that, but I don't like the like raw. Like it was like just a raw little slab piece of like salmon. It just feels slithery and gross in my mouth. And I'm what like, what was it? Was it yellowtail? Was it hamachi? I don't even I don't, know. It was it was one of those like it was just very raw looking. Um, I forgot. It's like really, really thin. Just it a, like, a thin probably, sliced probably piece yellowtail. of salmon tossed in some sauce. And they said, yeah. here you go. And, and I ate it and I almost it. it basically yeah, was eating a gigantic booger. You <laughs> Gigantic. You need to expand book. your palate, man. I you never, I tried. You never make what do you Japan? want from me? You're coming from you. You don't even like raw squid in the morning. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> That's kind of where I kind of where I draw the line is the raw squid in the morning. What made great you sake too? Great sake. Ooh. Saw saw uh someone make a a katana, a Ooh. sword. Japanese yeah. sword maker. He just Did you get one. Did you buy one? Didn't. A little expensive. The Japanese swords made by hand. I did get some knives. It, a lot of really cool stuff there. The sake. I'm laying the sake. Great it's sake. really good. I thought it was delicious. They gave us some at Sunda, and it was so good. I love sake. Yeah, laying the sake. I was going to ask, what made you choose Japan? Like, obviously, you could have went anywhere. Every, like, yeah, what everyone's asked made us you choose that. that? Uh, a couple of different factors. One, you know, we can only travel, you know, well, we can only do it in November. So we were mm-hmm. looking for a place that had, like, a respectable climate that wasn't like frigid. Yeah, uh, I'm not a. I don't sit on beaches. I'm not a beach sitter. <laughs> I'm with go, you there. I'll just go somewhere and sit in the sand for two weeks. Can't do it. I'll lose my mind. Uh, I'd be like a castaway. And so, wanted to go somewhere where we could explore. Um, and we wanted to go somewhere that we knew we could go for two weeks and like see a lot of stuff, not get bored. Um, and somewhere that we probably wouldn't do like a once in a lifetime type of thing. So. Mm-hmm that and then we'd heard great things about japan so we kind of put it all together and could see multiple cities and do that and so pick japan and had say it to he wasn't like our tour guide but we had like asked him and his translator a bunch of questions about it you know in the year leading up that is a good point that it's not something like even in the off season like that's tough to carve out two weeks to two go weeks. like explore a country yeah we're not going to do a two-week vacation every Every off season, you know, so yeah, you be able to go somewhere where you like need to go. Like, if you're going to travel that far, you have to be there for two weeks. Um, yeah, and it was really special, great time. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, before we get into baseball news, special announcement on the pod, huh? Special announcement, huh? I think I know what it is. I don't. I, I forget if we said we could say it or not. I forget if we said we could say it or not. So well, we can say anything. it. You go we ahead. Nope. You not go only ahead. do we have one person wearing Bruce Bolts on the pod, we have two. Zach yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bruce Bolt. Not only my favorite batting gloves, but Zach's favorite batting gloves. Family-owned business in Austin, Texas. Bruce Bolt makes the best batting gloves in the game. BruceBolt.us. I actually have. I got some tricks up my sleeve this year with my Bruce Bolts. I got, yeah. I got my white pair. I got my baby blue pair. Zach, do you know what color you're going to be wearing, Zach? Where are you no, going to go with? No, no, no. We're going to we'll go see. orange. We're we'll, going to go a little we'll orange. We will see. I'm excited, though. I'm excited. Tried them out recently. Liked them. Said, you know what? Liked them. Loved keep, them. Let's keep, keep it in the pod, you know? 
Are you going to wear an orange arm sleeve? Maybe, maybe if you're feeling a little swaggy. They, hey, they sent me one too, and I love it. It's great. Yes. We'll see. You know, Dakota like, loves those arm sleeves. I do. Yeah. Well, not so much anymore, but that's neither here nor there. I don't play anymore. That's why I still, but still you great just arm wear, sleeves. But you just Sorry. wear them around for fun now. Yeah, I just wear them to look. Cool. I thought you wore it at the wedding. Uh, I wear it when under, I go get buckets at the Y. No, I thought you wore it on your wedding when you were dancing. Uh, my he shirt wore, was on. He You'd wore one know. on each arm, and then he wore two calf sleeves. And I had their shorts on under my pants, actually, in case it got too hot. Yeah. Five inch six, and seven inch shorts. Five inch. That's right. Not six inch. Five you inch. were in the five. Yep. That's uh, Bruce Bolt.us. Bruce Bolt Pot. Um, the stove is cold. Stove is cold. Tom, I want to ask you a question really quick because you haven't said any words yet. Do you, Are you sad that you didn't make the John Boyd cut to go to the winter meetings? Uh, I've been to the winter meetings uh, in night in what was that 2018 in Vegas. Uh, there, there, it's a very odd event to go to. So I, I feel like I've done the experience. I, I did the job fair, sat at a table for many days without getting a phone call. Uh, so I, I'm good. I feel like it can't be that fun, right? Like no, Jen. Jen so I went in in uh, 18, and I you basically go if you're. I was going as a job like applicant, uh, looking for interviews. And I didn't realize that most people have prearranged their interviews uh, ahead of time for a lot of jobs. And a lot of times the, the public postings there are not really, uh, you know, they're not really doing a lot of interviews. So I literally sat there for two days didn't with no phone calls, just waiting for someone to call me to interview for literally any job. <laughs> no one was phone calling me. I was about to go back to my hotel room and just like a real low point because I had spent all this money on this trip that I really probably shouldn't have couldn't really afford and it was like, man, this is all a waste of time. And then the Yankees called me at like, I was going back to my hotel room at three. They called at 255 and said, can you interview at 315 in another hotel on the strip? And just started like, I just, just sprinted. sprinted. Literally was sprinting to give us at the Delano. And I was in like some other hotel. It was, yeah. So. But that uh, worked out. It worked out. Yeah. I mean, I worked That's out. It's crazy. Got but yeah, I was, it was from like literally the lowest point of my life to being like, I wasted all this money on this trip and I'm just being stuck in, I mean, Vegas is a cool place to go, but if you're like depressed and like think your career dangerous. is over, it's, yeah. dangerous place to be it's a dangerous yeah. spot. Yeah. And it, then it all flipped in, a mo- in just the one moment where I got the call for the Yankees. So that, I feel like I had my winter meetings experience. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's a weird place to go. Honestly, that's a good winter meeting story. Actually. It's yeah. That's awesome. I, I don't think people realize People think, I think that people think that the winter meetings are just a place where GMs go to talk to each other, but it really is like the entire baseball world goes like the equipment managers, all the equipment companies, like really every, yeah, like all, like all the equipment managers go and they all talk to Rawlings and Nike and all the equipment providers are there. And like, it's more of like a baseball like everybody go, like broadcasters go, everybody goes and they I was interview for jobs there. Like it's basically like major league baseball convention. I was literally earlier today. I was thinking in my head because I knew these were going on. And that's funny. You said that how people think it's just jam. I literally pictured in my head. I'm like, what happens there? And in my head, I was like, oh, it's probably this huge conference room. This here's uh, um. Brian Cashman sitting right here. Jed Hoyer's booths right here. Like each team has a booth and like agents are just like circling to what team they have players on. That's how I pictured it in my head. Tom, do you want to tell people what it's actually like? Because I was, I literally had no clue. I was like, oh, it's probably just like you go talk to the GM and they say we want your guy or we don't. Yeah. I mean, so that's like, there's like a whole section of the floor that like when I went, I didn't have access to because obviously I was not a major league general manager. Uh, didn't I applied for a few? I don't think I got any calls back. <laughs> uh, there, so there was again. Vegas was sort of a weird place because I think a lot of other times it's much more centralized. Vegas, it was a little bit more spread out because it's such a big place. Uh, but when I went, there was there's the job floor. So that, like you go on Sunday, you fly in Sunday, and then throughout Sunday and Monday, they're just posting different jobs. There's probably four to five hundred openings at the job and just in this job board room. It's just like walls and walls of clipboards, these different like job postings on it. And then you just kind of, you, you, you're you you handing out resumes left and right. You're submitting your resumes. Um, that's like, there's probably five to 600 people there just, just for that. Um, and you got to pay to do that. And then, then that's one whole aspect of it. There's a whole 
vendors part upstairs were like the Bush's beans dog was there. I remember they're like, you want to meet the Bush's beans dog? And I was like, not really. And they're like, he's here. Now. <laughs> and I was like, all right, there's like all these different vendors and stuff upstairs. Yeah. And then there's like some, like you made a joke before we got on about like doing symposiums. There are like panels and like different, like kind of like symposiums going on as well. So there's like all these kind of apparatuses going on around it. And then there's, like all the like MLB network, like I, when you would walk to go up to like where the job board room was, you'd walk by the MLB network set, you'd walk by the ESPN set. You see, I mean, you're constantly just seeing hundreds of famous baseball. Anyone who worked in baseball is there. Like I, when I would fly in and out of New York, I, you would see, like, I would see anyone who was based out of New York was like, you'd see a bunch of them on the flights. Like I ran into a guy who I interviewed with at the Yankees on my flight back and didn't recognize him. And then I'd look, hit me like two hours into the flight who it was. And I was like, just lost the job. Cause I clearly, <laughs> this guy had this guy could tell that I had no idea who he was. He, he looked at you and said, Hey, and you, like, what? But literally that's basically what happened. He was like, Hey, how's it going? Like, good to see you again. And I was like, I, don't know, I got, no hey, what's up weirdo. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> that's wild. Cause whenever you see it on TV, it's like, if they're doing their TV segment, they are literally in the middle of it. Like you see, yeah. Just like managers, GMs walking behind, and you're just like, are they just like holding court in the middle of this? Like, hey, you want to come say hi? So a, a, a lot again. I Vegas was a little different because it was less, it was more decentralized than in other years. But a lot of years, everyone says like the the hotel bar is like the place to go because everyone That's what, lobby they, drink. I don't know if it's true or not, but like they say, the bar is like where a lot of shit goes down. Like it's where the deal, it's where the deals get done. Yeah. It's it's so interesting. Like, and every every team has like their suite, and they all like, so like the whole front office is like in the suite, you know. And then an agent will come up into the suite, and they'll talk about the players, and everybody's. Then they have their war room, and they'll be in there, texting, texting away, meeting with each other. It's a it's very interesting dynamic, but it's been pretty cold. We had a trade, we had a Braves Mariners trade. A little bit of a salary dump for the Mariners. Braves get Kellenick. A couple of prospects go back to Seattle. Braves have traded away like every of their they they take a first round pick and then trade him before he gets to the big leagues. I mean, when you have like your entire team signed through 2045 for like 10 million a year, you can do that, I guess. I mean, and then and then they just get a younger guy who is on the rise again. Like, what? And it happened so like. It was for what Evan Evan White went from there to the Braves as well, who signed an extension. Um, Evan White and somebody else. Yeah. It's just wild, man. It you see a bunch of memes, and it's like, and Jared Kelnick has now signed a seven year, hundred and twenty million dollar contract already, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, fuck. Well, donate half a salary to the Braves. Yeah. <laughs> the and then. Uh, what was the other move? There's another move. Uh, the extension, Brewers extension. What's his? What's the name? Yeah, Jackson. Jackson. Churio. Churino. Churio. Churino. Churio. Tom. I mean, help eighty us. for eighty to, or eight years for eighty two. Eight mil. years for oh. eighty two million. It can max out. I think he's got two twenty five million dollar options, so it can max out at like one forty, and he's nineteen. I, when I when I saw it pop on my phone, I was like, "Man, I thought I knew baseball. I don't know. I've never even heard of this guy." The Brewers are giving him number a- two prospect. Yeah, but I, but I I just assumed that it was like some guy in the Brewers. I like I was like, I guess I don't know it as well as I thought. Yeah, I, the prospect stuff I don't know, but he's I guess he's a stud, and so he's going to be. Uh, he's only had six at bats or six games in the in AAA, so he'll, you know who knows if he'll start the season in the big leagues, but. He's there. He's there. He'll be in the big leagues next year with them at some point. And, you know, he's going to be there for a long time. Good for him for getting his money. And, you know, hopefully it works out really well for the Brewers and they have somebody for the next 10 years. When they signed him, they said part of the deal was they expected him to be the opening day starter in the outfield for them. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. Obviously, he's got to earn that. But it's uh, it's very interesting to see that kind of contract be signed, especially from the team perspective and I'm, I'm putting so much into a guy and buying out all of his cheap years. But I saw a st- stat that they were saying he's a top three prospect in MLB. And you look at the last like 10 years of guys who are top three prospects. It's a 
pretty pretty good list. You those guys good players. Pretty you go, those guys don't you really miss. The only one that's kind of missed recently is Joe Adele uh, with the Angels, and even he's hits like 500 foot home runs in AAA. So I'm not fully debt uh, giving up on him yet. So it's uh, it'll be interesting. It's inter- It's a very interesting contract. Did LB sign his contract before he even debuted? No. That's the biggest, that's the largest contract pre-debut. Which is it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, like you said, like if they're expecting it from opening day, like, yeah, I'd hope so. Hope it yeah. wouldn't give them this extension. Be like, yeah, we're going to start him in double A. Hopefully he progresses and we'll have him in 2025. 20, uh, yeah, I thought they might give him a couple months in AAA, but if he's going to, I mean, he's supposed to be a like unbelievably talented defensive center fielder who can swing it and even if he can't swing it he's going to go play really good defense for them until he figures it out so yeah uh, he was initially signed by the brewers on january 15 2021 they've already <laughs> given him an 80 million dollar contract less than three years later i mean i mean it's it's smart for them if, he, if he's that guy i mean they got him super cheap yeah that's crazy good for him uh sunny gray to the cardinals Sonny Gray signs with the Cardinals. Cardinals also got Lance Lynn. Three for 75, Sonny Gray. And also Brady Gibson. Oh, Kyle Gibson. He signed a one-year 12, I think. Yeah, Sonny Gray gets a three-year deal. Sonny Gray was unbelievable last year. I think people don't appreciate how good he was. Because yeah, I think, I think the Cardinals two, do. They're giving him $25 million a year. I think he had a 288. Is that right? Yeah. Now you yeah. get to face him. Pretty pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and we faced him a lot when he was with the Reds for those couple of years. So... Seen a little bit. Um, got good stuff. It's going to be good for their rotation. That was something I think going into the offseason. They said they were going to really focus on pitching. So um, they've rebuilt their starting staff. If the people want to see you face their starting staff, what what app should they use, Ian? SeatGeek. Yep. Nice, Dakota. That was good. Nice. You, thank you. <sighs> Do it again. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There's more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including sports, concerts, festivals, and more. They always want to make sure that you're getting a good deal. Green dots. Green means good. Red means bad. Green means good. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. Use code COMPOUND for $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. $20 off first purchase with the promo code COMPOUND. The link is in the description to download the app. Besides that, we got a lot of rumors swirling about Shohei. A lot of Shohei rumors swirling. There's teams in, there's teams out, there's teams in. There's a lot of huge name rumors, like with big name guys, like not even just showing. I'm saying like Soto, Soto uh, Glass Cubs now. were linked to Glass now and Bieber. Uh, now Bieber. it says Bieber's open to an extension. You know, like, you know how much? Quiet. Oh, wait, go, go ahead. Nope, no, no, go no, ahead. Go ahead. Ian, nope. Well, you you know, had, what's been feeling. quiet is we heard early in the offseason, we heard Alonzo's name floating around a lot. Yes. Oh, we, don't, we haven't heard Alonzo's name at all. Where is he? What are the Mets doing? Mets signed uh, somebody. What is his name again, Zach? Joey Wendell. Joey Wendell. Or Wendell. I um, think the Shohei thing is nuts. Go, Zach. Keep going. I was I was leading Zach into it. I was getting us back to Shohei because I thought no, he had something yeah, about I was Shohei. saying. Do you think a lot of the reports are just agents driving shit, like or leaking stuff to like? No, I. You know what I think it is. I think it's writers who have nothing to write about, and they're just. Making stuff up. Yeah, it is, it's funny when you see like Braves aggressively pursuing Otani. It's like, well, I'm guessing every team with any sort yeah. of payroll is probably pursuing him. Like, I don't it? know. Like, I don't think they know too much, but they're just kind of putting out there like, oh, they're aggressively pursuing it. It's like, well, so are five other teams that have the money to do it. Right. Yeah, wouldn't, sure, you, like, wouldn't you do? Everybody's- talking to him until they're not right that's like, what right yeah. like, it would be malpractice i feel like if you didn't check in on him like even the a's say he goes hey i want to play in oakland i mean like they, they couldn't pay him but uh, you know i'm just saying but maybe they'd say hey here's our pitch we're headed to vegas 
You want to go? We can pay you ten million a year. We'll give you ten million a year for ten years. How's that sound? Get you a deal with MGM? Come on. <laughs> I mean, the I think the, he's going to be amount a of like that. All these teams are in. Like these teams are out. The now the now Toronto's in big. Like yeah. until he makes the decision, nothing's going to happen. So nobody has anything to write about. So that's all they can write about. I I'm hoping like trade stuff breaks and we get some news on like a trade happens, but I really don't think until Shohei signs, I don't think anything moves. And I think when he does sign, everything moves like, and then you had like, he's expected to make a decision the next 72 hours. And then people come out and go, it's not going to happen at the winter. He's not doing it. Yeah. It's not happening. It is tough. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, just it's hilarious that people report. Not only are they reporting who's interested, but now they're starting with the timeline game of like, yeah. it's going to happen. It's not going to happen. And it, it was funny, like when it came out, like, oh, his camp says that any leaks will be used against the team. It's like, well, if, how does he know it came from within? The, like Brian Cash is not going out there and be like, we offered Shohei this. He said no. Like, no no GM's announcing stuff. Like, if writers write something about a team, is it like, oh, he's not signing with the Braves because I saw a tweet that he's linked to the Braves. Also, you know what would be hilarious is if if it was like, yeah, um, the you know, a, a leak came from the Braves. They're offering him $700 million, but he says no. Like, yeah. is that really going to happen? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Because they leaked it, he's out. Yeah, he's done. It does suck, though, for like, Blake Snell, like other big free agents. Cause it's like no team's going to sign unless they have no chance of getting Shohei. They think like, like the Dodgers aren't going to go sign Blake Snell. Cause then they're like, well, we can't play Blake Snell and Shohei Otani. So like oh, I they, think everyone I, has yeah. to wait and see. And I think everybody who has the money to sign Shohei are the same people. Like the people with enough money to sign Shohei are the same people that would be signing the other guys. Cause their backup plan, not, I don't, backup plan sounds mean, but you know what I mean? Like their second option is like, okay, like now we pivot to this guy. Well, and I also think that if you're an agent trying to make a market for your player, if you have two or three teams who could be bidding on your guy that right now are not bidding on your guy, you're going to wait until they're mm. in the bidding. And then you want to create your bidding war for your guy. Cause that's how you drive the price up. So probably none of these agents are going to hop in an offer like, Sure, they could be getting some light offers of like, hey, what about this? But until those you know, three or four teams really start to circle around one player, nobody's going to let their client go and make that decision. I would love to be a fly on the wall in some of these conversations just, yes. or like some on the phone calls, just like how it all goes down or like a trade deadline. Like our GMs and agents on the phone literally from sunup till sunrise, like – how does it happen? How do where does it fall apart? Where does it come back together? How do they look at guys who are comparable? Like, I, I think it's just such an interest. And then when you're talking about 300, 400 million dollars, like, okay, do you bring more people in to, to get an, uh, an opinion on it? Like, where, where does it like, where, when is enough? You know, like, it's just such an interesting in any sport. Also, with a guy like Shohei, like, how do you make the decision between, yeah. like, especially he's hurt right now, 10, 11, 12, 13? How many years are we doing? Right. Well, that's the other thing, like, Zach was saying, like, if you're Shohei, you basically prioritize, like, would I rather have the years or the more money? Because I feel like you might be able to get, like, 10 for 400, but, like, would you rather have, like, 12, 13 years and maybe, like, a little less AAV? You know what I mean? And then, like, it's like, okay, what city do I want to live in? What or, like, do does, he, does he get a blank check? Well, if they, if, if you're a GM and, like, hey, man, like, we, he really wants to play here, or the owner, and, and, like, do you say, all right, man, like, what do we got to do to get you here? Like, what's the number? I don't think it's all the way. I don't think it's all the way up to 500 anymore just because he's hurt currently. Do you hear the, yeah, but it, the, it's the circling rumor mill is it's over five, maybe five fifty. That's what I saw. No way. Yes, dude. dude <laughs> he's the best player but, to ever live. Ever. But it's got to be okay. All right. What? He is. Timeout. A little premature. No, it's not at all. No, I disagree. What he's doing. We don't right need now, to get into this. Wait, 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 wait. When he hits seven hundred and sixty-two home runs, we'll revisit this. Okay. But what he's do? What he's doing right now? In the Dude, last three years, look at Barry Bonds' stats. His years were better. He didn't pitch, bro. Don't care. He he's hurt. He's he not didn't pitching pitch. either. He's hurting. He's hurt. He's not pitching either next year. Nobody's playing right now. 
I'm Buffs saying next year he's not pitching either. He's hurt, so who cares? Uh, Dakota. It's the fact. That's a what fact. What he's done the last three years is the most impressive and productive baseball player to ever walk the face of the earth. Hmm. Eh. You're entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to mine. Barry how Bonds. Can you look Barry at Bonds. Put him in the hall. Go, eh. How is it? Eh. You can't give me an eh of these last three seasons. Come on. Get him the same Bonds. standard as the rest of us. Barry Bonds. A good point about Barry Bonds. Because oh, I choose to Barry Bonds view it as pitch. almost two separate people. And he was not the best as either position. We've already had this discussion on this podcast. But that does that seems like a tough you're comparing him to him. I'm saying like he's he was two never players the best you're pitcher saying... or best hitter in a season. Maybe the best hitter, but not the best pitcher in a season. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying your other. argument that Shohei Otani isn't the best player of all time because his he's only the third best pitcher instead of being the best pitcher in baseball is stupid. And, and he's makes- only the 112,000th player. Okay, say he never comes easier. back and throws another baseball again. He's the best player in history. That's idiotic. Who's to say he ever throws another baseball on the mound? You guys are crowning him, and he's played three seasons? How do I How do I he's find played out? three seasons? What do you mean he's played three I have no three idea seasons. how many he's played. I don't know. I don't really watch it. How many has he played? Isn't he close to like six or seven? Six years. Where have I been? What's uh, what's Shohei's war? Can you give oh, yeah, some exactly. numbers for six Shohei? years? I can't Oof. figure it out. He's a free. Yeah, I, I mean, he's been hurt. I can't a lot. figure not, out what not his even war is. Three hundred. I don't know. Mm. Was it 10? 10. Oh. 10. His OPS. war last year was ten point zero. OPS 10.0, nine point nine point six. He had a one dot with a one eighty four OPS plus, and he had a okay. So he's had like nine nine ten ten. Can I just read you a couple of Barry Bonds wars just for the sake of this argument? Yeah, let's like, hear it. Let's hear those. Mm-hmm. Barry Bonds. So Barry Bonds has a lot of good wars. You know, there's a nine seven nine 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 seven, a couple of eights nine two. He had three years. This is four consecutive years: two thousand one to two thousand and four. 11.9, mm. 11.7, 9.2, 10.6. I mean, hmm. it's pretty good. <laughs> I'm not saying clear. my argument's looking that's decent a, now. No, but that's, a re- that's a really good hitter. That's a really good hitter. But I also think, I think that baseball execs are valuing this a little bit different than all of us are, is that not only do you get the pitcher and the hitter, but you also get another roster spot. Like because he does oh, both yeah. things, then you get to use another roster spot for something else that you would have to use two roster spots for. So you're basically giving yourself an extra player to put on your team. Do you think when he comes back he'll throw out of the bullpen? No. I oh see. So well, he well might when never will, throw again. well I saw there's the, like they could use him as a reliever and then the year after he could start again. Did he get TJ? What did he have again? TJ. And get TJ, yeah. So he won't be able to throw next year at all. When did he get it? He uh, didn't, like he didn't have it during the season. September. I mean, yeah. September. Aaron Rodgers is walking and running. It was what'd you say, Ian? What October? I uh, right at the beginning of October. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like he won't be able to pitch next year. Zero yeah. percent chance. It'll yeah. take more than fif- twelve months. Was it fifteen? But if it was fifteen months, then he'd be ready. Sixteen months for twenty twenty five. You're talking about. 2025. Yeah. Not, yeah now, I'm saying pitch. this coming season, he will not be pitching a baseball. That's accurate. Okay. That's so all. That means, that means he's just going to go even more berserk hitting. True. You know, if, if there is a, if a team needs to create a little bit of room so that they can pay him a couple more dollars, uh, you know what they can look into? E R C. E R C. Yes. I got it. The employee retention credit from our friends over at Omega Accounting Solutions, the employee retention credit is a government tax incentive that helps small businesses like any of the teams out there that are looking for a couple extra bucks. Uh, We're helping small businesses get thousands back up to $26,000 per employee for overpayment of payroll tax during the pandemic. If you're a business with five to 500 W-2 employees, like one of these teams that's looking for Shohei, uh, you can recover payroll taxes for overpaid uh, payroll during the pandemic. Don't miss out your small business tax credit, even if you got a PPP loan. 
Still time to find out if you qualify and file your claim? Call 800-643-CUBS or visit Small Biz with a Z, smallbizcashback.com slash cubs for a free consultation. What uh, Do you guys want to predict a move? Predict a move. Ready to go. I think that if the Cubs don't get Shohei, they sign Blake Snow. Oh. And Cody Bellinger. I think they're replacement. We haven't replacement. heard much about Belly. We haven't heard much about Belly. Who's I think that's their replacement for Shohei is they get Belly and Snell. I think they're ready to open the checkbook. I've seen the number 250 being associated with Cody Bellinger a lot, which is a uh, okay. price tag. I'm not I... sure a lot of teams are going to want to. <laughs> Just going to say, I think I'll take it back then. I was thinking more in like the. I don't know, 150. Like I wasn't thinking 250. I, I was he's a very good player, but 250. I believe he's like got lot. Scott Boris as his agent. So that, yeah. that might be Tom, I Tom. I don't think I could justify that much. Besides Shohei, if you could pick one player to put on the Yankees, who would you pick? As a free agent, or can it be anybody? Yeah, well, yeah, can well, I... it can be a trade, but it has to be somebody who's already been rumored. Oh, okay. So it's not like I can like, go get Corey Seager or somebody. Um, um, no, Tom, you have to have one of the people who's in trade rumors or a free agent. Well, I could make up a trade rumor about Corey Seager. I could say he's on the block, you know, That's, you're you are in media. The, you're part of the media. You could do that. I think it's an easy choice, Tom. I mean, I, the, I, the obvious answer in front of me is Soto. And, and the problem with Soto is again, he's another Boris guy. Doesn't seem like he's going to sign an extension. Seems like he's going to play it out and go to free agency next year. So and he's already turned down what 450 from the, the nationals. I mean, what's the, what's but his number? If you believe in the Yankee culture, if you believe in the Yanks and what they're doing, wouldn't you think that six months of soda, you'd convince him he should be a Yankee for life. Wouldn't you think as someone who's watched the last few Yankee seasons, they haven't been like that much fun. <laughs> you know, I, if I, I don't, I don't know if I'd be signing up to, you know, come back. I don't know. Judgy and, and Soto in the corners. Well, and to be fair, though, Soto would be leaving San Diego, which has got to be a pretty cool place to live. I don't know. I agree with Tom. I think it'd be tough. I don't. I think it'd be tough to. Okay, they'd so have to do it, really good this year. Like the team would have to win. Tom, is it Soto or not Soto? Are you giving up your top prospects to get one year of Juan Soto? That's the thing. It depends the price, right? If it's if the price is Michael King and a couple other assorted prospects and not Dominguez and not Volpe, then probably, yeah, I'd like Michael King, but like, that's a, that's a no brainer. You give him up for, for Soto. If it's seven guys, if it's seven guys. I start to be like, I don't know that it's, it's tough. I listen, if the Yankees get Juan Soto, you're obviously thrilled and you, and you do what you, you, you do it, but the price matters, especially if you're not going to be able to have any guarantees of, of him being just nothing more than a rental. You've been I mean, very wishy washy on your one player that you would like to get. Is there <laughs> that's you know, is it tampering for the Yankees to like agree to a deal before like accepting a trade? I mean, I think technically, but doesn't it feel like a bunch of teams have done that the last couple of years? I feel like all sports, feel like, like the oh, they traded for him and signed him to an like, extension. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel like the Braves did it with so so uh Olsen and uh Murphy? If if you want the one player, it's is it Yamamoto, the 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 Japanese pitcher. That's that's, that's your guy. That's is my he on guy. the Marlins currently. No, he's coming over from oh, Japan. Are you? No, there attention? used to be one on the Marlins though, with the last name Yamamoto. Are you I, paying attention to baseball? Have I you, what promise you, you Zach, true or false? We played him in high A. Yeah, I thought he was with the Brewers. Yeah, he was, but then he got traded to the Marlins. I think he played for the Mets too. I'm so fucking Jordan Yamamoto. Jordan, Suck right? Man. Yeah. Come on, man. Don't do I even watch baseball? There's a lot of knowledge up here, man. A lot of knowledge testing me. Come on. Let's go. He was drafted by the Brewers. Yep. God, I'm so smart. Yeah, so not that after all that, not that Yamamoto. Sorry, sorry. I just I got a different guy. And I had to We're off it. the rails. We're off the rails. But I, I heard Yamamoto and I played against this Yamamoto. So I was like, I oh, I know him. And he played for I'm the hoping, and the Mets. I'm yeah. hoping we get some news in the next couple of days and that there is a flurry of action because that'll be that'll be good for the baseball offseason that's been a slow burn so far. You also, 
Aaron Nola signed with the Phillies. I think we talked about that yeah. last time. Though. You think there's any chance a team can afford Yamamoto and Shohei on the same team? Does, while that team also has Seiya Suzuki. Oh, wait, who has Seiya? Oh, I, don't, I don't know if any team can afford that, but probably the team in the best position would be the Dodgers. Cubbies? I don't know. You guys don't have that much out there. Like, who are you paying right now? Dansby? Like, I mean, you, but I'm saying, like, like huge, long, like long term, long term, million. the Cubs don't have a lot of money on the books. That's like, what I mean. Next year, a little bit. The following year, like, then it kind of falls off a cliff. Yeah. That, like, other than you, Nico, Dan, like, there's no, like, 10 year, 300 million on the books right now. No. Like, they re upped, they re upped Kyle. So there is, I mean, there's some money on the books for. 2023 4 2024 but not 2025 and beyond you think they got about 800 million in there the sp- spread between yamamoto and shohei say so, hey you guys uh i mean take this evenly yeah I, obviously shohei is a different number than we've seen before but like the rangers did go out and get seager and simeon that one off season I think the yeah, I just think the number probably collectively between the two guys is going to be too high for one team to get him. But supposedly the Yamamoto, one of the things is he wants to play with other Japanese players. So is you that, put is me that in real... that meeting rooms, Ian, and I'm getting them all to the Cubs. I'm going to sell them on the dream. They played for Team Japan. They won the World Baseball Classic. I'm going to sell them on it. Think is of that? that. Do Say you think Shohei that's? And Yamamoto. Oh. Do you think the Yamamoto rumor that he wants Ooh. to play with? other Japanese players. Do you think that's a real rumor or do you think that's some writer who's like, this would sound I, good? I feel like it would be 100% it'd be real. Imagine going to play right now in, in Japan and they're like, hey, just so you know, this team, well, you were just in Japan. You're basically, you know the culture. But like, you're like, hey, you're the only American on the team. No one else speaks English. Good luck. We'll give I, you a yeah, translator. I, that's it. I think that would be incredibly difficult and I'm amazed at how well Saya has. Yeah adapted him that's why i believe it like i believe he's probably like i'd love to play with another japanese just so he at least has somebody he can talk to like in his native language for sure there's um um, it, it feels like right now is the most japanese t- like there's feels like there's a lot of japanese talent coming mm-hmm. i saw someone else someone else got posted it was a hitter i believe I think there's another relief pitcher, Yuki, the Korean um, power hitter post got posted. There was yeah. another. That's there's right. one I other. There's one other. Another one today, hitter. Lee, the outfielder, right? That's the Korean. Lee is the Korean, I believe. And then there's one other Japanese hitter. I mean, Yamamoto's numbers are insane. In, he's won three in, straight. Incredible. Yeah, he's won three straight MVPs. Last season, his ERA was 1.21 during the regular season. He's had an ERA below two of the last three seasons. Is that good? Yeah. It's not bad. Got a career 1.72 ERA. It's, yeah, I mean, he's insane. Belly and Liam Hendricks, comeback player of the years. Yeah. Unanimous, yeah. I believe, both, I want to say. A lot of unanimous this year. Not unanimous positive on them both being unanimous. Yeah, I believe pretty... Hendricks was unanimous. Hendricks had to have been, right? Have yeah, been that was like a yeah. layup. I think sick. both both very well deserving and uh, really, I mean Hendricks at the gold he spoke at the Gold Glove dinner because Rawlings gave him an award and pretty pretty incredible stuff, mm-hmm. um, and just a powerful story. Sick for Belly too to, you know, top of the world. Did he win MVP with the Dodgers? Yeah, nineteen. Win an MVP, I mean, and then just kind of fall apart down to like what hit like in the hundreds his last couple of years with the Dodgers, or last year or two of the Dodgers and then sign a one year deal like a prove it deal with the Cubs and <laughs> and then just go he out proved it. It. he proved it he yeah. proved it proved it he was healthy and he proved it and he you know it was crazy cuz he had you know nine, uh, 17 he wins rookie of the year 19 he wins the MVP 20 20 happens he hurt his shoulder dislocated in the world series like high five in somebody and then yeah and then like wasn't healthy for two years and that's that's real and then he gets healthy and shows what he can do and gonna get paid paid oh yeah big money do you guys want to do um sloan screen time presented by our friends at sloan for sure yep i think next week we'll have a lot more i think we'll have some signings to talk some about. action 
I think so. Long is be, the right? world's leading manufacturer of commercial plumbing systems. The company is at the forefront of the green building movement and provides smart, sustainable, and hygienic restroom solutions by manufacturing water efficient products, including flush meters, faucets, sink systems, soap dispensers, and fixtures for commercial, industrial, and institutional markets worldwide. To learn more, visit Sloan.com. It's tough not going to the bathroom for two weeks, but I finally got back to a Sloan toilet at uh, O'Hare, and that was great. That was really great. Nice. I had a 423 piece. 423. Tom. Early morning. No, Tom, how was your Monday worse than your Sunday? What's going on? Listen, late night last night, mine 750 now. 750? I wish... I wish I could block out my bar from Sunday so you guys couldn't (laughs) even see it. Yeah, I Uh, was gross on there yesterday, too. Today, Ian, go ahead. What's yours? I'll go last because I think first place usually goes last. Uh, Minus four hours and eight minutes. (laughs) It's a blowout. Two hours, 15 for me. Hang up and hang out, guys. Big bright world out there, you know. Go go explore a little bit, smell the roses, touch my the inability. My inability to sleep after coming back from Japan really got me. Uh, we were talking about it before you joined. You weren't on yet, and I was like, Oh, I think it's like eight hours ahead. And Tom's like, It's way more than that. And I looked, and it was like we were recording at 5 15, and it was 7 15 in the morning in Japan. I go, yeah, Oh, so Ian, it's a 15 hour difference. So it's yeah, it's 8 a.m. There. there. When did our you get day yesterday? Our travel day yesterday, we left Japan. At six, our flight took off at six thirty p.m. We flew from Japan to San Francisco, San Francisco to Chicago. We arrived in Chicago, so took off Sunday at six thirty p.m. Arrived in Chicago Sunday, seven p.m. What? So we flew across the world. Uh-huh. And it was the same time as when we left. Coming terrifying. back, not going there. Coming back. Coming back. Going there, we lost a full day. Coming back, our Sunday, my Isn't Sunday. Isn't that my, crazy? That's you a missed, day you're you never going to get back. You missed a day of the world. Like my you day. Missed, you missed. Well, the, I missed the day of the world going there. On the way yeah. back, I gained. I had a 40-hour day. Yeah. My my Sunday was 40 hours. But long. like whatever date it was, November 17th, whatever. Didn't exist for you. November 20th. Yeah, but did he uh, November 21st. Days? I did did not exist for me. That's crazy. 20th. Where were you November 21st? Time's <laughs> weird, man. This is a weird world we live in. Wow. Flying over flying over the international date line is a crazy thing. It's a crazy thing when that happens. Yeah. How tired were you when you finally touched down in Chicago, though? Were you just I actually like, was not that bad. What oh. we did, what we did was we slept. So the flight was 10 hours from uh, Osaka to San Fran and we slept the whole flight. Was it like nice? Like, did you have like not like beds, but you know, like nice like areas to lay down at least? Come on, Dakota, come on. I mean, I didn't want to just like assume, you know, I know the guy's got a little guy just signed money. for 62 million dollars. <laughs> so you never get the number right. It's 61. It's always been, all, been 61. You've been all around it, but you've never gotten it right. The uh <laughs> yeah, but then I stayed up on the next flight. I was re- I had pretty bad jet lag on when we went there. I'm I'm okay right now. I don't know how I'm going to sleep. I just need to sleep. Uh, it's so like, hard because you when tomorrow. you go somewhere, you don't want to sleep and lose like you're just powering through it. Yeah. Last uh, night I fell asleep yeah. at like 11 and I was like, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. And I had a nice dream. Woke up. It's like, ooh, 2.30. I was like, fuck. Well, that's like Zach when we went to your wedding. And on Friday, we, we had to have uh, Fallon wake him up. Guys right. trying to sleep, I, and we wanted. That's true. That's exactly. No, what I woke we up. We wanted to get breakfast, and you were asleep. I woke up at seven thirty first. Nobody was up, and I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm going back." Well, you woke up at seven thirty. We didn't get back to the hotel till three. You're right. No one was up yet. Hey, I was up. It's four you hours of sleep. I was ready to go, and I said, "Fuck it, I'm going back." To no, sleep. you said earlier how much you had a hangover. <laughs> yeah, it's a business decision. <laughs> Fuck. That's episode 186 of the Compound Podcast presented by Parse Rum. Go to Benny's, go to your local liquor store, ask about Parse, get yourself some Parse for the holidays. We'll see you next week, hopefully with a lot of winter meetings talk. See you next week.